Okay, so the next bit is going to be looking about how we can apply some of this into some modeling kind of scenarios. And really the best way about looking at this is to kind of dive in with an example, but there's no new skills that are needed here. It's really just everything we've been doing so far, but just applied into some real life situations. So it says here that a manufacturer wants to cast a prototype for a new design for a pen barrel. In other words, like the bit of the pen that you actually hold onto out of a solid resin, which is just like a plastic really. The shaded region shown in the diagram is used as a model for the cross section of the pen barrel. So the shaded region, which I haven't actually got shaded on here, is just talking about this bit in the diagram. And it says that the region is bounded by the x axis, the curve with the equation y equals k minus 100x squared, um, and it will be rotated about the y axis. So as soon as you see something being rotated about the y axis, we know that it's going to have that dy for it, and it's going to be the pi times the integral of x squared dy. It also tells us that each unit on the coordinate axis represents one centimetre. Now, the first thing it does is it says suggest a suitable value for k. Well, k is going to be when x equals zero. When x equals zero, y would be equal to k. Now, if we're talking about the pen barrel, I don't really like this kind of sketch that we've got here of it. Here of it. Really, it's this kind of sketch that it would look like. Um, it's actually going to be a lot more narrow for it to look like a pen barrel. And so what this is asking is if k is going to be how tall it is, how long do we want our pen to be? So when k, x equals zero, y equals k, as this is the length, of the pen barrel, a value, a value, I don't know, maybe a pen is probably between 10 centimeters and 15 centimeters seems sensible. So what I'm going to do for this question is I'm gonna say that K is going to be equal to 10. And now when I've set k equal to 10, that is where this diagram comes from. This is actually the equation y equals 10 minus 100x squared. And you can see it looks a lot more like a pen shape. This one doesn't look at all like a pen. This one actually looks like a pen that you might hold on to. So they'd probably accept any value here of k between 10 and 15. Then it says, use your value of K to estimate the volume of resin needed to make the prototype. So this is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna be using the formula that we had at the top of the page, which is pi X squared dy. And it's pretty obvious that for the rotation, it's going to be between zero and 10 on the Y axis. So the volume is going to be pi times the integral between zero and 10 of X squared. Well, let's just quickly figure out what X squared is going to be. We have Y equals 10 minus 100 X squared, so that we get 100 X squared equals 10 minus Y. And so X squared is equal to 10 minus y divided by 100. So it's going to be 10 minus y divided by 100 dy. I'm going to take that divide by 100 right out to the front just to make it even easier. So I'm going to be integrating just 10 minus y dy. I'm going to keep going here and I'm actually going to do the integration. So 10 is going to integrate to 10y and y squared is going to go to a half y squared, and that's just between zero and 10. So squeezing this all in on the same page, I'm gonna sub in 10 now for y, and that's just going to give me 10 times 10 minus a half times 10 squared, which is a half times 100. And obviously when you sub zero into this expression, it's just not going to be needed at all. So we get pi over 10 multiplied by 100 minus 50, which is just 50. So you just get five pi. And so five pi that we have here is just going to be, oh, hang on, this shouldn't be over 10, this should be over 100. So it's not going to be five pi. It's actually just going to be pi over two. Let's figure out what pi over two is. So it is just 1.57, and it's gonna be centimeters cubed for the volume. So it's 1.57 centimeters cubed of resin needed. And then it just says to state one limitation of this model. Now there's going to be lots of limitations of this model and I'm just going to pick out one of them for now. So maybe we could say something like that the cross section is unlikely 
to match the curve exactly. In other words, the pen isn't going to be exactly that kind of shape that we've got there. But there are some other limitations, and I'm going to pick out some limitations for different kinds of scenarios. So some limitations for a pen barrel made out of plastic resin. One of them could be that the measurements may not be accurate. Maybe K isn't equal to 10. Maybe it should have been 10.1. The second thing says that an equation of the curve may not fit perfectly. Well, that's kind of the one that we've said, that the equation may not fit the, the uh, shape of the pen perfectly. Thirdly, some resin may have been wasted in the production, so actually we may need to use more resin than what was there. Or maybe there may be air bubbles in the mould, and so if there's air bubbles, you'd actually be using less resin. These are the kinds of things that they accept in the mark schemes. And then what I've done is I've gone and have a look um, at a couple of other questions, and I've picked out from the mark scheme what limitations that they accept. So you can see this one also they reuse for a bird bath being modelled in concrete, which is actually going to be the next one we look at. Measurements may not be accurate. Measurements may not be accurate. Measurements may not be accurate. Lots of those things being repeated. Could say that the inside surface may not be smooth or that concrete may have been wasted in the production. Look, there's some repetition from some of these other limitations. If it was for a glass bottle, we've already said this one. We've already said this one before that the equation of the curve may not fit perfectly. When it's a glass bottle, they say things like the bottom of the bottle may not be flat or the glass may not be smooth or the thickness of the glass may not have been considered. These are all limitations to the model that may change the reality of what the volume calculated is versus um, what you have calculated using integration. So it's useful just to memorise some of these. I personally like this kind of one and this kind of one here. I think they're pretty foolproof and can be used for any of these. So we're now going to try this with another example, this time with an exam style question, just because it kind of like ups the, um, the amount of work that needs to be done. The pen barrel one was pretty straightforward. So let's have a look at this. It says figure one shows the central cross section A, O, B, C, D of a circular bird bath, which is made of concrete. So the water is going to go in here inside this bird bath. Um, and it says measurements of the height and diameter of the bird bath and the depth of the bowl of the bird bath have been taken in order to estimate the amount of concrete that was required to make this bird bath. Using these measurements, the cross-sectional curve CD shown in figure two is modelled as a curve with equation y equals 1 plus kx squared and x is between minus 0.2 and 0.2. So in this second figure, the blue curve is the one that I've just underlined. And it says where k is a constant and where o is a fixed origin. The height of the bird bath measured 1.16 meters. Great, we can see that on the diagram here. And it says that the base of the bird bath is 0.4, as shown in figure one. So you can see when we model it with this curve of the y equals one plus kx squared, it does have the width of 0.4. We just need to look at the idea of it being 1.16 over here. And they're talking about the depth of the bird bath. So it says, suggest the maximum depth of the bird bath. Well, I think this bit here is going to be how tall it is. And this bit here is going to be the depth of the bird bath. So I'm particularly interested in finding out what is this coordinate here. So for this first part, we can see that when x is equal to 0 in the equation that we've got here, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. So I know that this distance here is 1, and I want to find out what the maximum depth is. Well, we know something. We know that the total distance from the top to the bottom is 1.16. So the maximum depth, hopefully you can spot what I'm going to do here. It's just going to be 0.16 meters. That's what the maximum depth is. OK, now it wants us to find out the value of k. Let's think about some of these things we know here. I know that this coordinate is 0 0.2. and 1.16. If I have a coordinate and if I have an equation, I should just be able to sub these coordinates into here and it should tell me what k is equal to. So let's have a go with that and see if that works. So we get that y equals 1 plus kx squared. I'm going to sub in the fact that when x is equal to 0 0.2, y is equal to 1.16. So 1.16 equals 1 plus k times 0.2 squared. So 1.16 minus 1, that's 0.16 equals 0.2 
squared, which is 0.04k. And so k is going to be 0.16 divided by 0.04, which is 4. And so k is equal to 4. Now, it says, hence find the volume of concrete that was required to make the bird bath according to this model, giving your answer in meters cubed correct to three significant figures. Well, let's just think about what's happening here. We need to figure out which direction it's going to be rotating. Well, I think in order to create the bird bath, it's going to be rotating about the y-axis. So if it's rotating about the y-axis, we know that the volume is going to be equal to pi. Y-axis means it's going to be dy, so it's pi x squared dy. And we need to find out what the limits are going to be for this. Well, I think we should try and consider maybe just finding the volume of this top section that we have here. And then what I think we can do is we can subtract it from the cylinder. So let's say what our strategy is going to be here. I think that our strategy is going to be the volume of the cylinder subtract the volume of the bowl part. And this is going to be the formula for the bowl part. So let's start off by finding the volume of the cylinder. Now the volume of a cylinder we know is just going to be pi r squared h. So let's just check that we remember what the values are going to be. The radius is going to be 0 0.2 and the height is going to be 1.16. So we're going to have pi multiplied by the radius squared multiplied by 1.16. So let's do our 0 0.2 squared times 1.16 and we get 29 over 625. So 29 over 625 pi. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this to do the volume of the bowl part. So we need to figure out what x squared is. Now we know that y equals 1 plus 4 x squared. So I'm going to rearrange this so I get y minus 1 over 4 is equal to x squared. And so this is going to be for the bowl part. And we know that the volume is going to be pi times the integral of x squared dy, and we just need to check what the limits would be. So the limits are going to be between this value, which is when y is 1, and this value when it's at the top, which is when y is 1.16. So it's going to be between 1 and 1.16 dy. Now I like to bring out that 4 to the front, so I have pi over 4, the integral between 1 and 1.16 of y minus 1 dy. And I'm just going to go and do that integration now. So that's pi over 4. It's going to be a half y squared minus y between 1 and 1.16. Let's just sub in these values nice and quick. So 1.16 1.16 squared divided by 2 minus 1.16. Okay, minus 609 over 1, 2, 5, 0. In fact, it's probably going to be easier if I just do that as a decimal. Minus 0 0.4872. Sorry. Minus 0 0.4872. And then when I sub in 1, it's just going to be a half minus 1. So simplifying some of these bits here. Again, I could just go straight in with the calculator because it wants it rounded to three significant figures, but I kind of like doing it in exact form. Um, well, for the second part here, a half minus one is minus a half, so it's going to be this plus a half. So let's say it's minus 0 0.4872 plus a half, which is 8 over 625. So it's 8 over 625. And if you're dividing that by 4, it's just going to be 2 over 625 pi. So this means that the total volume of the bird bath is just going to be equal to the volume of the cylinder, which is the one that we've got here, minus the volume of the bowl. So it's going to be 29 over 625 pi minus 2 over 625 pi, which is clearly just going to be 27 over 625 pi. That's the exact volume. So 27 over 625 times by pi. And we get the answer 0 0.136 
to three significant figures, 0 0.136 meters cubed to three significant figures. Okay, and it did ask for three significant figures. Yes, it did. Then it says for part D, state a limitation of the model. So there's lots and lots of different things we could say here. We could say that the measurements may not be accurate because it says in the, um, in the question that measurements were taken and they were just given as 1.16. Well, they might not, might not have been accurate. The inside surface may not be smooth or some concrete may have been wasted in the production. So I'm just going to go with the first one, which is that the measurements may not be accurate. So this is one of my limitations of the model, is that the measurements may not be accurate. And then we're going to have a look at the last part of the question where it says it was later discovered that the volume of concrete used to make the bird bath was 0.127 meters cubed, correct to three significant figures. Remember, ours was 0.136 meters cubed. Using this information and the answer to part C, evaluate the model explaining your reasoning. So that means compare the one that they've told us is the true one and the one that we've worked out in part C. When it says to evaluate the model, basically saying, is this a good model or not a good model? Well, these are pretty far apart from each other. If I do 0.136 divided by 0.127, you can see that it's 7% bigger than it. So it's not very close. So I'm going to say that these are not very close to each other. I'm going to say for part E, the value 0.127 and 0.136 are not very close. In fact, we could say the value we calculated is 7% larger. And so the model is not very good. Equally, you could try and argue it was a good model and say that they are quite close to each other. But really, I think it's better to say that this model needs some refining, that there's more that this model needs to be able to do here. So let's check the mark scheme and see what happens. So we got that the depth was 0.16, which we got. The value of K was 4. All of these calculations here is that's what we got for the actual answer 0.0432. We had it in its fractional form, but we could have done the whole thing in decimals to get to this. Any one of these, we mentioned these earlier on in the question, and then it says some comment consistent with their values. So we do need a reason. So there might be something like this where we've talked about the percentage difference between them. It's not a good estimate because the volume of concrete needed to make the bird bath is approximately 7% lower than predicted by the model. Or we might expect the actual amount of concrete to exceed that which the model predicts due to wastage. So the model does not look suitable since it predicts more concrete than was used. So if they're ever asking you to do this kind of comparison here, I think it's good to figure out how much extra was used. The way I got this 7% value that I did is I did the value that we had divided by the true value that gave me 1 point, 0 0.136 divided by 0 0.127 it gave me 1.07 and that in shows a 7% increase so our true value was 7% larger than that one so it's always worth doing a bit of a calculation just to make sure that you get that final mark for that bit okay my next video I'm going to do some exam questions for us on this topic as well